In this video, I wanna talk about how to multiply your portfolio. So what I see most people do is they get equity built on their properties through, you know, generally through both appreciation and the tenants paying the principal down. So over the course of time, they end up getting equity built, right? And then once they do, they go back to the bank, they get a new loan on the property and they pull out their equity and they turn around and go buy more real estate. And that's, that's a great plan. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but one of the things that I look to do is I'm always looking to refine my portfolio. So what a lot of landlords do is they, you know, they just want to keep adding and adding and adding and you know, too much real estate can cause us problems as much as it helps us. Right. You know, if we end up having to, you know, if we end up having management problems, we have properties that are not getting maintained very well. Uh, we have properties that are, uh, you know, in areas of town that we just don't really want to be in anymore. It probably makes sense to just say, you know what, it's time to let those properties go. They no longer fit my portfolio and I just don't need them anymore. And I would rather have better quality houses. So that's my mindset, right? Some people are in the mindset of they just want more, they're in the mindset of accumulation. And so they usually go down that road of refinancing their equity out and turning on buying more property. The problem with that is that they never get their properties paid off free and clear. And that's when the cash flow and the equity and the net worth really starts to compound is getting the properties free and clear. So what I do, what, you know, one of, the, one of the, I feel like a strategy that I use that works really well is when I have properties uh, that I no longer really want uh, or no longer really fit my portfolio is I, I'm always keeping a list, right? I'm always, I have my spreadsheet, my property spreadsheet that has all my different properties in the portfolio, you know, that lists everything from, you know, address, the rents, mortgage, taxes, insurance, lease date, note date, all that stuff. And so in that spreadsheet, I'm keeping, um, I'm keeping track of the properties that I essentially have on my hit list. Okay. These are properties that I don't really see myself keeping long into the future. Uh, they don't really fit the portfolio anymore as my portfolio is constantly upgrading. Um, I see these properties as, well, they don't quite fit anymore. They're not the type of house that we really like to do anymore. They're not quite the area that we like. They're not attracting the tenants we like, um, those types of things. So, Every year I'm looking at which ones are my other ones I wanna sell. So right now, for example, we have, I think three on that list. Now, I don't just go sell them if a lease ends. I only wanna sell them when a tenant finally decides they no longer wanna stay. So for example, I have one that we have, we'll be looking at about a $60,000 profit whenever that tenant moves. So the longer they stay, the bigger that profit essentially gets because they're paying the principal down and the appreciation ideally is continuing to go up or the values are continuing to go up. So that gap just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's no reason for me to be in a hurry to sell it. Instead, as long as that mortgage is getting paid, then I want them to stay there as long as they, they're willing to. So, you know, they're just continuing to build that equity more and more. But whenever that time comes, that they move, I don't really want to place another tenant in there. I don't want to have to do repairs to it, fix it back up and have turnover costs, all that stuff. So I identify that property as, okay, that's, that's on the hit list. That one's going to get sold. And then what I do is as long as it's going to pr produce enough profit, ideally I want to take that profit and split it into um, two to three more better quality properties. So I'm using this one lesser property that I no longer really want and I'm allowing it to get paid down. I'm allowing it to appreciate. That's usually going to take somewhere if we buy it right. Um, you know, maybe we own it for five years or so, maybe that three to five year range. And when we go to sell it, ideally we're making somewhere between 50 to hundred grand. And so that should allow us to take that big chunk of profit and split it into buying two to three much nicer homes. And we put the down payment down on those because usually we can't buy them quite low enough to not have any money down. But we take that 50 to 100 grand, we split it. So maybe we're putting 25, 30, 35, $40,000 down on the other houses. And next thing we know, we go from, you know, the cash flow on one to the cash flow on two or three. We doubled or tripled the cash flow, you know, off of one sale. 
Or, you know, we look at the value of that real estate. So let's just say we sell it for 200,000 or it's a $200,000 property. So we have $200,000 worth of real estate. We sell it and then we split it into um, two to three more houses that are, let's say $250,000 each. So that $200,000 property is now Five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of real estate. So, by simply by deciding to sell that real estate, we're moving it into better quality homes that improve the portfolio and um, you know improve improve our cash flow. So that's one way to do it without continuing to add and add and add. Because what I teach is not to be in the mindset of trying to build the biggest portfolio that you possibly can. Because eventually, at some point that's going to cause you more stress than it's going to serve you. Whereas having a little bit smaller portfolio, very well maintained, very nice quality homes at a little bit higher value is going to, you know, it's gonna give you everything you need. And especially once you start getting those properties paid off, it's gonna be a monster. So you don't have to have hundreds of properties to be extremely wealthy, you know, 50, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 houses, something like that. Nice 250, 300, $350,000 properties. You're going to have all the wealth you'll ever need. So that's my tip of the week is, you know, rather than just continuing to refinance and buy more, instead you sell the ones that you don't really want to keep anymore. And then you split it off into buying better quality real estate and you can buy more nicer homes through the sale of one that you don't even want anymore. So I, in my opinion, it's worked out very, very well and encourage you to try it. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, um, give it, this video a like and a comment, let me know what you think, and I will see you next week on the next one.